and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about speed painting some ghosts some spooky ghosts Ooh. okay so anyway here i have my uh i have this lord executioner guy uh and he's a good example of the new ghosts and i want to talk about how we've set him up first and what we're going to do to really achieve some great effects quickly so you'll notice that i've i've primed him uh, in a black and white, but not traditionally zenithaled. So, for example, I didn't put more, I, I added a little more light around the top here, mainly to pick out his little skull face, but I was very light with that gray. Instead, I left this top part mainly dark. And then what I did is as I went down the miniature toward these tendrils, that's where I actually put all my white, okay? And in the same, so, and we're doing that in the same way I made sure I popped out all these faces and the backs of their tendrils. I added some normal zenithel up here on his, uh, I don't know, executioner thing, his little hangman's thing here, as well as some on his axe. We'll talk about that. Like, those aren't really what I'm going to focus on in this particular video. We're going to focus more on the ghosts and the spectral stuff. Because most ghosts <laughs> that you paint in the Nighthawk range don't have a giant hangman thing sitting on their back so you wouldn't have to worry about that so the first thing we're actually going to do i'm over here in the airbrush booth because we're going to do most of this with airbrush but keep in mind you could do all these same steps with glazes i just thought this one would be fun to do to show you mostly with an airbrush however the first step we're going to do is actually still a traditional brush um, i have a little reaper vampiric shadow but any sort of gray white will work and we're going to get out our old friend, the makeup dry brush. Okay? Um, this is what I do all my dry brushing with. It's a makeup brush. It has no particular brand on it. It's something I buy in bulk packs. You want? I get to ask this question a lot of which particular pack I bought. It doesn't matter. I bought a ton of them. I, I, like, I'll generally share some. But in general, I use... Um, you want things that are for contouring or for eyes. Obviously, with eyes, you normally get soft brushes. So I put a little of this Reaper Vampiric Shadow. It's a gray white. You don't need this exact color. Any sort of like, any sort of like gray white will work. You can see that's about the tone of it. So I get some of that around on the brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off. And one of the keys to a nice, smooth, dry brush is to wipe more than you think. And then you test on the back of your hand. Okay, great. <clears throat> we always test our dry brush first. That's how we make sure we don't get a bunch of paint going onto the model we didn't want. And then our touch is going to be very light. I'll stabilize him here so he's not bouncing all over the place. Yeah, he's still bouncing. Boy, this guy is real bouncy. There we go. You notice I'm just lightly focusing it here, trying to pick up these folds. I'm barely touching the model, but you can see how that stuff's coming out now, nice and smooth. I'm not getting any big streaks, nothing like that. It's just helping me pick out all those nice raised details. Getting the edge of the cloak, just lightly touching the model, and look how smooth that dry brush looks, right? You notice how I can really build it up over time. Let me touch that stuff a little, hit some of that bottom thing a little bit. But there we go. That's kind of what we want to do there. We'll, we'll bring that into use later. Great. With that now set up and our little folds all gently picked out, we wipe off our dry brush. Just wiping it off of my apron. There's so little paint on it anyways left. And now we move to the real meat of painting this guy. So, for this, we realize I said we're going to use ink, so I'm going to set him to the side very quickly. I apologize, my camera's going to bounce here for just a moment, because I had to readjust something. Okay, we're going to set him to the side. I'm going to bring all the inks I'm going to use in. All right. All these are from Dollar Rowney. I've got four inks. First up, white. Simple, easy, nothing special. White ink. Well, I mean, it is something special. It's one of the most special things in the world. White ink is something you should absolutely own. If you don't, get some now. As soon as you're done with this video, order it. it just, 
it's an essential product. Next up, we've got turquoise because it's me, so of course there's going to be turquoise in here, but this is going to help us get that nice blue ghosty effect. Finally, we've got some Payne's gray and some black, and I'll show you how we use that to achieve a cool effect. All right, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and glaze some of our uh, turquoise in there. Now, I want to talk a little bit about mixtures of inks when you are uh, glazing with inks, okay? So, the first thing first is I'm just using my standard Vallejo airbrush thinner. It's the same thing I always use, but I'm going to use it at a very high ratio. So I'm about seven to one here of thinner to turquoise, okay? In other words, very, very light. And the reason that I'm doing this so thin, like you can see how much thinner is down in there versus the ink. I'm just gonna backfill to mix it up. If you're curious on the, the particular airbrush here, by the way, what I'm gonna use for this is an Iwata, <laughs> excuse me, an Iwata Highline. Okay, but before we start airbrushing, this is where we get to a little trick. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this with an airbrush, we're going to get out an old friend from childhood. And that old friend is Silly Putty. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Silly Putty. It's on it. And what I'm going to do with my Silly Putty is I want to make sure that I leave the top part of him nice and black. So I'm going to tear a piece of my Silly Putty off. I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. Most of the ghosts have this pretty nice shape on their robes. So I'm going to take him, I'm just going to kind of attach that silly putty on there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just push it down until I get it more or less where I want it lined up on the edge of the robe. So you start above the bottom line and then you just work the edge until it's more or less in line. And there you go. Now I've blocked off the top of his robe. Just that easy. You can do the same thing on the other side. Just pull off a little piece. So again, we lay it down above the, the line that we're wanting to block. We get it nice and attached so it's sticking on there. The nice part about Silly Putty is it doesn't really ever pull up paint or anything like that. And then we just slowly work it down. This back part's a little tricky because he's got this extra little ghosty bit sticking out. Now, if you're relatively, if you want to be super quick with this, you can not worry about this step. You could just cover it with your finger or something, the age old block. Um, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter, but that's pretty close. See if we can, sorry, I got to pull it close to myself here so I can just try to get it nice and aligned. Okay, and there we go. All right, so now back to our nice thin turquoise ink. As always, we start by testing on the back of our hand. See what we're getting out of that. That is super thin. See how thin that is? Great. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and starting from here up, we're going to treat our airbrush like a brush. There's no paint coming out right now. My finger's all the way forward. And I'm just going to rock it back nice and slow. And just like a brush. Not using a lot of air. I'm going to start bringing it up. If it starts to get a little wet, we just blow some straight air at it. See how we're getting that color in there, but it's nice and subtle.
because it's so thin, I can easily control how intense I want the color, right? Dry it up there. You notice I'm barely pushing any air through. And the reason for that is because I don't want it to spider web all over. When you're working with inks that are this thinned, if you sit there and you just go wham and you slam back on the trigger, all you're gonna get is a bunch of spider webbing. And we do the same thing on the skulls here. So we just, just like a brush, just like as though if I was glazing, I would slowly be dragging my brush up this way. All right, get the other side of his cloak here. Dry him off every so often. We let that ink settle. We'll come up and do the other part here. Get these other ghosty boys here. He's got a lot of little friends with him. He's never alone. Isn't that nice? Our Lord Executioner here is never lonely. He's always got a bunch of little friends. I assume those are friends, but they're probably the spirits of the past people he's executed. It's probably a less happy story than I'm making it out to be. That's all right. We have a little inside his robe here, because he has inside parts too. He has no he has no insides. He ain't got no body. So you see how using this very thin turquoise glaze, I can just build this color up. Very slowly, very accurately, how I want it, and get this nice subtle effect that really uses the undershading, but I can still get a pretty intense turquoise if I just keep focusing the paint. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that's a little glossy. Even once it's dry, it comes out a little glossy, and that's fine. Oftentimes, inks themselves tend to have a medium that will look pretty glossy. That's gonna happen. And when you thin them way down, they get super duper duper glossy. Again, this is okay. Not to be concerned, we can handle it. Making something glossy in the middle of a project is no big deal. A lot of people think of varnish as something you only put on at the very end. I feel that's a missed opportunity. You can put varnish on anytime. It's like creating a save point on your miniature. Okay, so there we go. You can see we got this nice, simple transition. You can see where the early dry brushing, we maintained a lot of our stuff and we're good to go. Let's intensify that just a little bit right there near the top of that. Get a little bit of the back of these ghosts a little more. There we go. Beautiful ghosty transition in our turquoise. Okay, so now, but we still have the problem of the top parts, the robes. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure this dude is all nice and dry. And like I said, he'll be kind of glossy, but that's okay. He'll dry a little glossy because he's got shiny ink all over him. That's all right. What I wanna do is now I'm gonna carefully remove my silly putty. Do, do, do. And I don't have to be too worried. Silly Putty, as you can see, comes right off. Doesn't peel up any paint. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Cover ghost. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our nice little ghosty boy there. Now, while I still have my turquoise and that's off, I want to kind of make his face 
glow with that same spirity blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my thumb under the rest of the mini. And where I've created that minor light from the dry brush, I'm just gonna come in and at an angle, I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly do a glaze and then dry it off and see how I like the look of it. Okay, good. So now he's got his little blue face. And don't worry, we'll pick that out a little more later. All right. So, while that's drying, I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna do. Our next step is to make sure we want those robes to be nice and dark, right? That's what we want. Well, for our robes to be nice and dark, we need to get some black on them. But again, I've started working in some blues and stuff like that. So I don't want to just basically go back to my, you know, just go back to straight black. That would be kind of boring. So instead, we're going to do a little mix of our, uh, of our, that Payne's gray and that black ink. Now again, this stuff is really strong. Okay. So All right, airbrush clean. Slide the back on. All right, now we'll do a new mix. So, on the body itself, we're gonna do the same thing. Pretty heavy thinner. I'll do a little bit less. This will be more like eight to two or something. One drop of Payne's Ray, one drop of black ink. That's basically how we're gonna do this. That gives us just a nice, gentle hint of a blue tone in there. So again, you can see in there, mostly thinner. We backfill it to mix it up. Now, this time, we're gonna just use our thumb to kind of block it off. And so what we're gonna do right in camera there is again we're just going to slowly glaze down that black you can see how I'm pulling the brush toward the shadows just filling it in nice and gently The more I apply, the more black it gets. I can even shoot up if I want to re-hit some of those shadows in his face, right? And I can just slowly work that black down. This lets us treat our airbrush like just a very careful paintbrush. But that gives us these buttery smooth blends every time, right? So now I've got him turned nice and black. Maybe I wanna get a little more there, whatever. Where his robe exactly ends and his, his arm robes are, are, it's a little confusing. So that's fine. We can get our low areas there nice and dark. Okay. So now we've got his top part nice and black. He's shrouded there, but he's still got his face with a little bit of light on it. Maybe I want to back out a little bit of the top of that skull. It still looks a little bright. We'll kind of back a little bit of that up because I want it to be more focused on his face. There we go. All right. Now comes our final touches. So taking my black mixture, basically what I'm gonna do is just dump out most of that ink. I just literally turned my airbrush sideways onto a dumpy thing I have there. 
So that's still in there. Just dumping. Okay? Left whatever's in there in there. Then I go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure, why not? Right? Of that. Then I grab my white ink. And I make a big mess because the, the tip was locked. I didn't check it before I started the video. I'm going to put two drops of white ink in there. And I'm just going to backfill to mix that. What that should give me is a nice soft gray. Okay. What I can do from with that nice soft gray is I can then come in and very carefully hit these areas at the top of his robe or stuff like that just to smooth it out. Just light touches. And again, I can mostly dump. And I can go a couple more drops of white. And so what we do is we just really carefully and slowly work this brighter color up so we can have this very soft, subtle highlight on the top of his, his ghosty cloth. Now, if you don't want to take all these steps, if you just want to jump straight up, you can do that too, and that's okay. Yeah. So then we just go a nice, subtle spot of light there, and there, and then from directly above his face. We rock the trigger, that way we've got that face nice and picked out. Arr. Spooky ghost. And there you go. That's basically the ghost. That's basically the body of your night haunt done. Now obviously you'd want to come in, you'd want to do his little hands or whatever. Maybe you want to pick out the face a little more strongly. You could do that in a couple different ways, obviously with a brush. But that's how you kind of get the bulk of your night haunt painted, right? Like that gives you a really nice transition. Now at the end, you might say, well, hey, you know, I thought you said you were going to show us, Vince, you liar. I thought you said you were going to show us how to get rid of that gloss. I did this and now my guy is all glossy and I don't want a shiny ghost. Who wants shiny ghosts? Totally fair, imaginary person. I'm here to help. So when we have the majority of the body done, I'm not done with a miniature, but that's okay. There's still tons to do on this guy, right? Like, because he's the character and he's special, I'd want to do a special axe and stuff like that. But this would give us the bulk of most of our ghosts. I take out my AK Ultra, uh, AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, except no substitutions, right? And we go ahead and we drop a little of that in there into an airbrush. into an airbrush that's clogged. Awesome. There we go. And we just give him a nice simple coat. Of our AK Interactive Matte Varnish. Now I'm gonna hit all these other parts too, because why the heck not? Let's go ahead and just lock that stuff in. And there you go. When that dries, he will be super matte, as matte as matte can be. Because that's what that ultra matte varnish does. It makes you ultra matte. So that's your, that's right there is your simple method for using your airbrush to speed paint spooky ghosts. Um, it turns out, it, I think it makes a really nice effect that allows you to still go in and if you want to do more stuff, you certainly can. You know, you, like I said, you still, you can go in and pick out their little hands, their little weapons with metal or whatever you want to do. But I think it's a really nice technique because it produces those super subtle soft blends but still lets you keep the bright white, the dark black, all that sort of thing. So, there you go. That's my technique for it. Like I said, you could certainly do all the same stuff with brush glazes and the inks. Wouldn't be a problem at all. You could go back in and edge highlight anything you want. You know, you can do the additional steps from here you want to do. And maybe we'll have some videos about that stuff too. But. 
As always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. I hope this little technique on using, uh, you know, inks as glazes uh, through your airbrush to achieve nice transitions for your spooky boys was helpful. But as always, I thank you for watching this. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. Thank you for watching this one. Have a great day.